Hello, I'm Julius Robson, Chief Strategy Officer for the Small Cell Forum, and in this video I'm going to take a step back and look at the big picture of how small cells can make the world a better place, and exactly how we as a forum are working to make that dream a reality. Our ultimate goal is to support digital transformation, connected communities, smart cities with smart buildings, Industry 4.0 and the Internet of Things. Digitalization is not only about improving process efficiency to reduce costs and environmental impact, it's about creating whole new meta-industries around the data it generates and the actionable insights which can be gleaned. This is not just about a change, it's about accelerating the pace of change. And mobile is an accelerant of this transformation because it's literally put data into our hands and made it personal. Mobile makes everyone computer literate. And this is why mobile connectivity is now included in the definition of public utilities along with everyday essentials like electricity and water. And yet despite this, for the many small to medium enterprises and public organisations that don't have a great mobile signal, there's not really been much they could do about it. But that is changing, and making mobile an accessible resource for organisations of all sizes is at the heart of the Small Cell Forum's work plan. So to help understand the tangible ways in which Small Cell Forum is making this happen, let's first map out the ecosystem we're building. We start with the customers. These are all different types of organisation that would like to be able to lay on mobile connectivity in support of their goals. For our purposes, we can group these organisations into public sector communities, enterprise venues and industrial scenarios. Whilst all of these need connectivity, the route to delivering it differs between them. Communities are represented by local authorities who in turn are influenced by national and federal policymakers and are subject to regulatory control. 5G is doing a great job in raising awareness amongst these stakeholders of the potential for smart cities and connected communities, and we are now delighted to see supportive policies being adopted which simplify small cell deployment. The enterprise venue represents a broad group of generally privately owned spaces which are open to the public. Hospitals, hotels, hosted working, commercial properties, shopping malls, multi-dwelling units are just some of the examples. And increasingly, it's in these organisations' interest to ensure people on their premises can stay connected. Industrial verticals include factories, logistics, ports, mining, remote utilities, etc. And particularly those for whom mobile connectivity is mission critical. To clarify the need here, it's about organisations wanting to offer connected spaces to their customers and staff and for things. And at the same time, recognising that mobile operators already have agreements in place with these people to provide global connectivity service. What's needed then is that organisations have access to mobile infrastructure, which allows them to lay on the connectivity. And where this is successful, these organisations get to leverage the enormous investment made by mobile operators in the technology of a spectrum, managed security, customer support, etc. And at the same time, mobile operators are benefiting too from the improved coverage and indoor experience for their subscribers. So a clear win-win for everybody. In fact, service providers are already doing this to a limited extent. Mobile network operators do deploy indoor systems and neutral hosts have DAS to support multi-operator services. But this is really only accessible for the largest buildings like stadiums and airports and has not really scaled down to the small to medium enterprise. But whilst they may be small in size, they are many in number. Of order 99% of all companies fit the UK's SMB category and in the US represent around half of GDP and employ half the workforce. It's a big market, but to address this requires a step change in the approach, which is what small sales do. In fact, private small cell networks are already enjoying rapid market growth right now thanks to CBRS in the US and similar spectrum initiatives in other regions. There are a number of different service providers jostling for position in the private network space. MNOs bring their existing spectrum and network assets. Neutral hosts can build on the existing customer and MNO relationships. Specialist system integrators draw on their deep domain specific knowledge and relationships. And OEMs are tailoring their equipment to a directly address the private cellular market themselves. Underpinning this ecosystem is a common programmable technology platform with global economies of scale and with the right qualities to extend the addressability of mobile networks to the markets described. Small cells fit the bill because they are scalable, secure, low cost and light touch. They can scale up and down and have lightweight management models. They have the same end-to-end -end managed mobile security we already trust. Costs are low thanks to the high volume components like FAPI based silicon as well as automated and outsourceable operations. 
and small sales of plug and play and qualify for the light touch harmonized deployment regimes. So the small cell ecosystem starts at the top with a diverse market of communities, enterprise and industry verticals. These are being served by a partnership of mobile operators, neutral hosts and private networks, all using a common global scale technology platform. Small Cell Forum's mission is to accelerate the establishment and growth of this ecosystem. The service providers are at the centre of this picture because they take the technology to the market and understand both. So the first thing we do is to ask them about their experiences and find out what would make them better. In Q2 2020, we surveyed over 100 mobile operators, neutral hosts and other deployers to find out what factors most impact their rollout plans. This chart captures the most cited factors which impact small cell deployment in enterprise and industrial scenarios. Business case aspects like reduced OPEX and a clearer case for our ROI were most cited. And whilst equipment CAPEX was sometimes cited, it was not in the top 10, emphasizing deployers' preoccupation with ongoing operational support. And this is backed up by the frequently cited need for plug and play deployment and the ability to either automate or outsource operations. Looking at urban deployments, siting issues come out on top, both in terms of access to affordable sites, as well as standardising the process for permitting and approvals from local government. Whilst enterprise was most focused on OPEX and ROI, for urban it's the total cost of ownership that matters. And like enterprise, automation is an important factor. And for urban, it's about a common cross-domain end-to-end approach. So how exactly does an industry forum go about building an ecosystem? Well, essentially, it's about doing things which strengthen the relationships between the different players you see before you. It's also about understanding how the technology changes the rules of the game and steering it to support the right outcomes for the industry as a whole. One thing we definitely need to do is to set out our store in the marketplace, and we're doing this with our options for indoor cellular deliverable. This helps building owners understand what they can do to get great mobile signal on their premises to meet their business needs. It'll help them understand how their requirements impact the choice between, say, a single operator or a multi-operator or a private network. It'll identify the solutions on service offerings that meet their needs and point them towards the people they need to talk to next. Neutral hosts are a growing group in the small sub forum and they have great interest in using small sales to address the SME market. They report a willingness to pay from the enterprise, provided that the connectivity is multi-operator. And operators are also recognising the benefits of partnership with neutral hosts and are establishing the rules of engagement with specifications being developed. One of the step changes mentioned earlier is that small sales and private networks have triggered a shift in the touch point between a neutral host and an MNO. The network demarcation point is jumping from the antenna, as was the case in DAS, back to the mobile core, putting the radio access network into the neutral host domain and making them the new customer for RAN equipment. As such, we are capturing a consensus set of their technology requirements, which includes their split option preferences, a request for more multi-operator capable products, and RAN support of the same venue-specific features found in DAS systems. Private cellular networks are custom engineered for organisations for whom connectivity is mission critical. Small Cell Forum's work items span the value chain from market engagement right down to technology development. The recently published SCF 235 provides a broad view of the private network applications with case studies from our members and best practice recommendations. We're taking this template to a port and logistics audience and starting a dialogue to capture requirements profiles specific to this vertical. We are also clarifying to the market the range of ways that mobile and industrial IoT can be enhanced with small cells, private networks, edge computing and 5G. Technology-wise, we're capturing requirements for network management features specific to private networks and ensuring these are supported by the emerging 5G standards. Clearly, this can incorporate the requirements coming down from our ports and logistics workshops. Edge computing has many synergies with small cells and private networks, which we describe in our recent publication, SCF234. We're now following this up with solution blueprinting and API harmonization. Overall, our recent engagements have revealed some concern from buyers that the market appears to be a free-for-all with a potential for dead-end roadmaps to trap the unwary. Now, this is something that we as an industry forum are well-placed to address. By conducting all of these activities under the same roof, we can present a coherent industry standard approach, and this will help build market confidence and expedite mainstream adoption. 
A key part of Small Cell Forum's contribution has been the development of technologies and hardware aligned to our low cost and scalability paradigms. In particular, FAPI is the de facto standard for silicon used in virtually all the world's system on a chip based small cells. In the past year, we've updated our 5G FAPI specifications with a new suite of API for the physical air, the RF front end and network monitor mode. A network transportable version of this MacFi API is the basis for our split option 6 interface specification. And to accompany this, we're developing management models using the NetConfiang configuration protocol in alignment with ORAN. We're currently analysing the relative merits of split 6 and are developing a position paper to clarify the sweet spot small cell scenario for this type of disaggregation. And tying all of these aspects together, our soon to be published 5G small cell products definition provides industry consensus on a set of baseline product configurations for 5G small cells. This includes an extensive survey of deployers planned 5G small cell networks balanced with component and equipment manufacturers technology roadmaps. It harmonizes key design parameters like MIMO configuration, system bandwidth, power and front hall interface. This will inform specifications for 5G component design, as well as setting cost and performance expectations needed for business case planning. Both important cornerstones for wide scale 5G adoption. As we've seen, automation was frequently cited as a top priority by deployers, and our experience has shown that harmonized management is the prerequisite technology enabler. Plug and play deployment and autonomous operation are essential for small cells to be low cost, light touch and scalable. So this is a busy area for the forum. SCF233 on Solon orchestration distills our automation experience and applies it to 5G. The key takeaway is that to reach the holy grail of service oriented end-to-end -end network automation, we first need to harmonize the way in which equipment is remotely managed. Small cells need a special flavour of lightweight and scalable management compared to their feature-rich but information-heavy macro counterparts. We've now picked this up in the NetConfiang work item mentioned earlier. Also mentioned earlier was the capture of management requirements specific to private cellular networks. Small cell sighting and harmonised approvals were two more factors flagged up in our deployer survey which we're also addressing. The recently published paper on precision planning in SCF 230 illustrates how machine learning can be applied to optimise the small cell sighting problem. It demonstrates savings in site count, improved network quality and higher site ROI thanks to the greater location precision. And some more good news, Small Cell Forum has long lobbied for harmonised approvals legislation to simplify small cell deployment. And this effort is finally bearing fruits with the EU just recently adopting the Small Area Wireless Access Point regulation. We shall remain active in this area as it passes into law and will continue to push for similar schemes in other regions. So there you go, a whistle-stop tour of the various initiatives our members are driving which together build up the envisaged ecosystem to deliver mobile infrastructure into enterprise, industry and communities. Here's a cheat sheet summary with the timing of the deliverables. So these are the works we're doing this year with the green ones already published and the yellow ones due for completion in the coming months. Please come and visit our website where you can download the papers and specifications and also find videos just like this one where work item leaders share their insights and takeaways. And these are the works planned for delivery from October, all of which are already underway. So if your company is opinionated and active in any of these areas, get in touch and get involved. And if you're sitting there thinking that there's an obvious gap in this plan, something that will move the needle on this ecosystem and something that you're prepared to drive, then by all means, let us know and together we'll make it happen. To recap, our ultimate goal is the digital transformation of enterprise, industry and communities by ensuring organisations of all sizes have access to mobile infrastructure. This is being driven by the partnership of mobile operators, neutral hosts and private networks who are all using small cells because they're scalable, secure, low cost and light touch. Top factors for enterprise deployment are OPEX and ROI, plug and play and operations which can be outsourced or automated. Urban barriers are siting and approvals, TCO and end-to-end -end automation. Our work plan themes identify the most important topics for our industry right now, which are private networks, neutral hosting, 5G products and components, edge computing, split option six, management automation and advocacy and policy. And Small Cell Forum is hosting a wide variety of member initiated activities which coherently build our envisaged ecosystem and address the barriers to deployment. 
So there you go. I hope you found this a useful insight into the workings of a small cell forum and thank you for your time today.